Flying the Airbus A380, the world's largest passenger aircraft, has always been a fascinating subject in the aviation world and a desire among many aviation fans. In 2025, 20 years after the type's first flight, questions about its viability, cost efficiency and long-term future continue to be points of discussion. So, how much does it cost to operate an Airbus A380 in today's post-pandemic aviation landscape? In today's video, we'll try to answer that exact question and explain why this mighty aircraft is still dear to the hearts of several airlines, passengers and aviation investors alike. Despite Airbus halting production of the Super Jumbo in 2021, the Airbus A380 continues to see a good amount of use post-pandemic. Yes, airlines like Thai Airways, Malaysia Airlines and Air France have fully retired their fleets, but there are other carriers that continue to invest in the type by refurbishing cabins and keeping the jet in their long-term plans. Then, of course, there's Global Airlines and its desire to exclusively use the A380 for its operations, operations that have yet to be revealed at the time of this video. The startup did accomplish its inaugural flights in May with the help of wet lease carrier Highfly, but we currently don't know what's next for the airline. Of course, maybe by the time you watch this video, some plans will have been revealed. Nonetheless, it's this latter carrier that has really brought the question of A380 operating costs into the spotlight. After all, its inaugural service saw just 95 passengers. The three flights that followed weren't too full either. So, without further delay, per data from Air Insight, operating an Airbus A380 in 2025 can cost between $25,000 and $35,000 per flight hour, and this will naturally depend on airline configuration, fuel costs, and maintenance variables. Yes, the A380 is notoriously expensive to operate due to its high fuel consumption, maintenance costs, and airport fees, which are among the highest in the industry. However, its substantial passenger capacity means that on well-traveled routes, per-seat costs can remain competitive. So, how do all the costs break down? Well, fuel is almost always the single largest cost component, although there are certainly times where oil prices drop significantly and provide some relief for airlines. But assuming that these scenarios are rare, it's fuel that'll be the A380's biggest expense. The A380 burns approximately 4,600 gallons, about 17,400 litres of jet fuel per hour, translating into something like $12,000 per hour depending on the price of Jet A fuel. Maintenance is also a significant factor due to the aircraft's four engines and complex systems, requiring more frequent and costly overhauls compared to twin-engine jets like the Airbus A350 or Boeing 787. Going cost by cost, here are the ranges for each category. Again, this is per flight hour. Fuel, $9,000 to $13,000. Crew, pilots and flight attendants, $2,000 to $3,000. Maintenance, $6,000 to $8,000. Airport fees, $3,000 to $5,000. And navigation charges, $1,000 to $2,000. This gives us a total cost between $25,000 and $35,000 per flight hour. As we noted in a previous video, these hourly costs are averaged over time. Obviously, maintenance isn't happening in the air. Historically, the A380 was perceived as a white elephant due to its immense size and high cost. However, post-pandemic demand recovery, slot-constrained airports and the desire for luxury travel experiences for a limited budget have reignited interest in the Super Jumbo, at least for a niche segment of the industry. Case studies indicate significant variability. Emirates, the largest operator of A380s with over 100 aircraft as of June 2025, benefits from economies of scale. Their fleet is heavily utilized, allowing fixed costs such as ownership or leasing to be spread more effectively. In contrast, Global Airlines is purchasing used A380s at discounted prices and plans to upgrade them with luxury cabins, while servicing premium routes such as those between London and New York. Time will tell if Global's business model is sustainable. So far, the first flights have been much more challenging than the company had initially hoped, 
together with some mixed reviews from the travellers, but there is always room for improvement. Airline executives and aviation analysts have weighed in on both the challenges and strategic advantages of flying the A380 in 2025. For Sir Tim Clark, president of Emirates, the A380 remains a crucial part of the company's fleet strategy, which generates the most profit. In fact, according to Reuters, Clark even tried to persuade Airbus to continue producing the A380 after the last aircraft was rolled out in 2021. Having no viable alternative, Emirates wants to keep its super jumbos until 2040. Another A380 operator, Korean Air, is also extremely satisfied with the plane, with its chief executive saying the following in 2022. Passengers, they love the plane and we have a lot of business class seats on it, so it is a very good aircraft to fly on high demand routes. Meanwhile, Global Airlines CEO James Asquith has been optimistic about launching regular A380 services in 2025, unveiling lightly refurbished cabins and promising a unique experience like no other. However, caution is warranted regarding the niche role of the A380. Unless you are a large company like Emirates or can identify the ideal route pairings like Korean Air, the economics behind operating the largest passenger plane in the world may be challenging. Nonetheless, airports with slot limitations such as Heathrow and JFK provide favourable conditions where an A380 can outperform smaller wide bodies on a per-seat basis, an opportunity that Global Airlines has been hoping to capitalise on. To summarise, we can say that operating the Airbus A380 in 2025 is costly, but not prohibitively so for the right business model, route structure and brand positioning. An airline can expect to spend between $25,000 and $35,000 per flight hour, with profitability hinging on full cabins and premium offerings. For major players like Emirates, the aircraft remains viable, even advantageous. After all, there is that small market segment with enough money to go for that in-flight slash onboard shower experience. The same goes for Etihad and its residence product, a unique offering that sees a multi-room suite in the sky for up to two guests. It comes with a private bedroom, an ensuite shower room, and a separate living area. And well, for new entrants like Global Airlines, success will depend on whether luxury-focused strategies can draw sufficient passenger volume to cover A380 scale expenses. The airline still needs to get its in-flight entertainment systems up and running, necessity if it wants to consider itself a premium carrier. Looking ahead, the A380 may not dominate the skies, but it could thrive in niche markets where capacity, prestige and slot efficiency align. For aviation enthusiasts and frequent flyers, the Super Jumbo's return is a nostalgic and luxurious silver lining in an increasingly cost-driven industry. What do you think of the hourly operating cost of an Airbus A380? Was it more or less than you expected? Let us know by leaving a comment. In addition to our daily YouTube videos, Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles and a podcast every week. Visit simpleflying.com.